Could you please make a short introduction about Alice? Why Alice? Well, uh, I think that I can answer the two levels. Uh, why Alice the name, the name in itself, Alice in the Wonderland. Uh, that is the idea that if someone managed to enter into different spaces, different from the usual spaces uh, and locations to which we are used to, we are going to see different things, uh, things that are astonishing and uh, things that uh, sometimes are terrible, sometimes are marvelous, but uh, they enrich our experience. So the, the, the name in itself tells something about the Alice. Alice is a project that I'm now launching, uh, funded by the European Research Council. Uh, and this project is basically about uh, uh, the idea that there is uh, an immense variety of uh, innovative experiences in the world. Um, and these experiences are not very well known in the global north, in which I would include Europe and North America. And these experiences, uh, many of them coming from regions that were once submitted to uh, European colonialism, um, they in fact are some, sometimes forms of resistance uh, to the forms of oppression that were created by colonialism and later on by capitalism and imperialism. And um, these innovations take place at very different levels of life and uh, I think that they are part of the experience of the world, not only because they really are, but because the global north uh, is shrinking. Uh, that is to say, we see every day that uh, Europe in itself and North America are a small part even of the world economy. And we see with the crisis in Europe and the, in the North America, we see that very clearly. So there is a, a wider world out there and we should know uh, more about that. So this project aims at looking at that wider world and see what we can learn from it. And here is the take of, of Alice. Uh, that is to say, um, Europe, particularly Europe, you know, for five centuries, have uh, been uh, teaching the world uh, about uh, civilization, human rights, etc. We know that this teaching was basically uh, uh, an imperialistic uh, teaching. That is to say, it was not a, uh, a process of education on an equal basis. It was part of colonialism and imperialism. And therefore, there were idea, ideas uh, together with genocide, with guns, with violence. And uh, this has been part of our the, the European history. And, uh, and North America, in a, in a sense, followed the steps of, of Europe in, in some ways um, for five centuries. Uh, now, uh, we look at Europe, for instance, at this precise moment of financial and economic crisis. And it looks like that Europe that has been teaching the world about all the solutions for progress, for a better life uh, in the name of the European civilization, all of a sudden Europe has no solutions to solve the problems that it is facing at this point. And that's why we are really immersed in a very, very deep crisis. And therefore, it's uh, my idea that probably there are in other regions of the world, uh, outside Europe, outside the global north, what we call the global south, there are many interesting experiences of innovation, of new forms of running the economy, of conceiving of the state, of human rights, of democratic experiences, of uh, other types of economies and so on. And my idea is that Europe and the Global North should know about these experiences. Of course, the problem of this project is that is Europe and North Global ready to learn from these experiences? Well, I start from the hypothesis that it is possible, but it will be very difficult because I think that Europe, after five centuries of trying to, uh, uh, not trying, in fact, actually uh, thinking that it's teaching the world, um, now uh, it has lost the capacity for learning from the outside world. Uh, is this incapacity or this incapacitation irreversible? I don't think so. I think it is possible that we launch other type of uh, uh, global relations, counter-hegemonic global relations that allow uh, for the global north to learn from the experiences in the world. So this project is about increase the knowledge of these experiences around the world and to see whether they can be made intelligible. 
uh, to the global north and uh, in a sense try to develop a dialogue because it's not just for the, the south now to invert the situation that is to say the south now is teaching the north uh, I think that we should learn reciprocally uh, that would be my idea of, of uh, a post-colonial relationship that is to say of course there are lots of experiences in the global south that should be uh, uh, widely known and particularly known in the, in the global north the global north should learn from those but of course uh, also there is innovation here and even this process of learning should also lead the global south to learn from this interaction so I'm uh, really looking for a different type of post-colonial uh, dialogue among these different regions uh, of the world <laughs>